थैंक यू ऑनरेबल डायरेक्टर फेलो साइंटिस्ट कोलिग्स फ्रेंड्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट मी टेल यू दैट आई एम नॉट ए रियल फिशरीज एक्सपर्ट बट वॉट एवर आई स्पीक इज बेसिकली फ्रॉम माई अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ मरीन बायोलॉजी एंड ऑल्सो जेली फिश बायोलॉजी and uh, since i am also uh, a, the co-chair of the session i also thought that uh, you know it there are there it there could be some of the uh, recommendations uh, uh, which is as part of this uh, special uh, session so i have included that and in some of the cases i may be brutal in my argument but uh, you know that is primarily for uh, creating the uh, the database or recommendations on uh, this okay so i i have two uh, sessions for my uh, talk for uh, next 15 minutes and one is actually the history of uh, uh, the uh, jellyfish uh, research in india and second part will be uh, basically uh, the fisheries and what actually we have to do as a triggering factor from jbs7 and these are the things which i am going to uh, present and uh, first of all uh, you know the uh, uh, we have not heard of uh, blooms maybe 10 years back and uh, in the recent past uh, we are frequently hearing about uh, the jellyfish uh, blooms and its impact on the fisheries and uh, and that actually created uh, a kind of public perception on jellyfish especially in kerala and in many parts of india as well so i start that discussion uh, i start the discussion from that point of view especially in biodiversity conservation we speak about a large number of shortfalls starting with teltonian uh, darwinian and uh, hutchinsonian and there are a lot of uh, shortfalls in biodiversity research and one of the uh, shortfall is actually a lesser public perception on biodiversity and that is applicable in the case of jellyfish as well and this kind of uh, popular uh, news about the jellyfish and uh, of course has created uh, in um, um, enhancing the awareness about this animal in the public okay so the public perception is one of that aspect and uh, and second is that you know uh, we always popularize unfortunately through the media uh, the concept of jellyfish dominated ecosystem and it is not true because jellyfish has its own life cycle its own migratory pattern and its own seasonal abundance and for which we have limited amount of knowledge and with that limited amount of knowledge we are trying to create stories and that is one thing which you should avoid because we should have a baseline data on which we have to actually build upon uh, models and then uh, predictions and that is the first thing which i want to tell you and second even now there are some taxonomic confusions and we are doing also some uh, molecular studies which says that you know many of the things which we consider as a single species may be multiple species in that sense we need to have a kind of integrated uh, taxonomic approach primarily to document what are the species we have not only scyphosoans and a large gap is there in the case of hydrosoans because scyphosoans since it has it has a market value we are behind that but you know there is another group of organisms yeah, yeah, called hydrosoans which are least studied in india so primarily some of the groups uh, in india can take uh, that up and that is another thing and second uh, you know we have a larger understanding globally that uh, what are the ecosystem services offered by the uh, the, the jellyfish and whether we have a stronger understanding on the ecosystem services offered by jellyfish in our ecosystem and this is another priority uh, where india should actually focus and primarily you know when you have a large number of ecological models and uh, which tells us that you know the, what is actually the linear scaling relationship between ecosystem services and when where are you going to put the ecosystem services of jellyfish when you look at the ocean uh, as a whole and this is another question probably we have to answer and also when you place uh, the uh, jellyfish in as a, as a, a key organism in the coastal waters and then what are the ecosystem services for example look at the uh, regulating services and what kind of information that we have even in smaller uh, backwaters in kerala for example climate regulation through the process of carbon sequestration and transportation through the water column you know these are the some of the areas where probably in india uh, or uh, at least i rec i suggest that uh, governments sir uh, when you have a publication and the last chapter can be a white paper on the status of jellyfish diversity and uh, and, and fisheries in india so that that can be a baseline uh, that, that can be a baseline to start with and uh, so that you know whatever the information gap available in india probably as an offshoot of the jbs7 which we are holding it here and the prob in in the next 20 30 years the researchers can take up the research and fill in the gap wherever we have knowledge gaps 
and second is a regulation of pests for example predator uh, predator of several organism and we again yesterday also somebody asked about the role of turtles in you know in in balancing the population and we know the status you know turtle is not the only organism which feed on that there are a large number of other predatory fishes also uh, feed upon that then coming to the provisional services, uh, you know, we know that uh, human beings use it as a food. But in our ecosystem, what, how in 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 the food web, uh, the uh, the uh, jellyfish, various species are exactly placed, and then uh, you know it is a source of collagen, as we all know. And then a large number of other uh, novel products which are coming up. These are all provisioning services and supporting uh, services which are offered by the jellyfish in the system include uh, the nutrient recycling uh, uh, the, the, as a predator, provision of space because uh, it, it provides a lot of space for other organisms to settle in and this as, a, as a nursery for large number of organisms, fish including the garangids primarily. And it hosts for algal symbionts. That is another, uh, Mike Dawson has a larger project now supported by uh, the uh, uh, NSF also uh, on the symbiotic associations with uh, uh, the uh, uh, jellyfish, skyphosoans and other organisms as well. So that is another thing and cultural services. And for example, in many of the western aquariums, this is actually jellyfish aquarium is a, a separate entity itself. And unfortunately in India, we don't have a larger uh, oceanarium to showcase except in uh, Gujarat perhaps. And uh, there, there, is a, there is a session on jellyfish and then uh, art and handicrafts, uh, you know, the, the memento which is uh, produced here is an example because that, that person never tried with an octopus, sorry, the uh, a jellyfish model. And then, you know, the, this is another way uh, to bring uh, the public perception also onto that and, and ecotourism and then species that uh, arouse curiosity like uh, the, the internationally famous in the immortal uh, jellyfish. We need to create some other species like that. So if you consider that, you know, what are the level of understanding of, uh, uh, you know, our science in answering all these questions is first uh, thing which probably we have to uh, discuss. Then these are the, uh, pr uh, the primary groups uh, that we have in NIDA area and Skyphosovans. I am as quickly passing through because that is not the purpose of my uh, talk here. Uh, and then a uh, global diverse, if you look at the global uh, diversity of uh, uh, Skyphosovans, it's around 242 uh, species. Uh, as you can see, uh, the number increasing in uh, the beginning of the 20th century with a lot of contributions coming up. Towards the end of the 19th century and 20th century, you can see a lo lot of discoveries across the world. And uh, uh, and then also, if you look at the history of Skyphosovan uh, uh, taxonomy, particularly in India, and uh, this is the first period where a lot of people worked uh, across the world, starting with the uh, iconic uh, uh, people uh, in, in, in this research. And I'm not uh, dealing uh, because it's not the purpose, I'm quickly going through that. And if you look at the Skyphosovan taxonomy specifically in India, you can see that uh, one of the uh, uh, primary contributors is uh, Brownie. And primarily he worked on uh, Gulf of Manna. And then Anandali and his work are very uh, famous uh, uh, throughout India. And then we can see in 1930s and 40s, there is tremendous contribution by uh, Menon and, and Rao. And then Nayas' work in 1946 is one of the classic work on uh, the hydrozoans even now in, uh, in India. Uh, and uh, then, I, then there are subsequent publication by other uh, workers, you know, who uh, had uh, worked in, in, on uh, uh, east and west coast of India as well as in islands and when we got this particular species you know uh, from uh, a coast nearby and uh, then uh, we identified Mar uh, Marivagia stellata and the photographer sent to uh, Galil, uh, Bella Galil uh, was working in Israel and then she was surprised because she initially described the species from uh, the Mediterranean and then we got a specimen from here and she also hypothesized in her paper uh, that this could be an invasive species in Mediterranean and the origin could be in Indian Ocean. When we got it from uh, the, the uh, Kerala coast, she was very excited and then uh, she said that, you know, this is a very interesting because we, it proved her hypothesis because this species originated here and migrated to uh, uh, the Mediterranean. So some interesting uh, things like that. Anyway, so these uh, are some of the uh, interesting uh, works. And uh, 39 species of Skyphosovans, and uh, that means 17 percentage of the global Skyphosovans. It's not a smaller number. So, in, in terms of diversity, India can always always be proud because it's almost uh, 17 percent of the global uh, Skyphosovans are there in Indian waters. And if you look at the Skyphosovan uh, diversity in India, this is a graph. I'm not, again not going into the details. Uh, Catalogue style is uh, the species uh, dominant uh, group here. 
And in terms of uh, species richness, as you can see here, you know, the uh, we have a lo lot of reports from the uh, uh, east coast of India. Uh, there are specific reasons, historic reasons for that, because the taxonomy, initial taxonomy work started from the uh, Gulf of Manar region, and that is one of the region, and then remaining from the islands as well, if you look at this specific uh, diversity. And these are the some of the uh, general representation of the uh, diversity in India. Not all, it is not all, it is just for the purpose of understanding things. And uh, you know, we also started only because of a project, and we are not going to continue that primarily because it's all funded by if it is funded, then we will do, and otherwise, we will wait for the fund to complete the work. And uh, this is the first work in India on uh, proteomics, venom proteomics, of uh, we did for three species. Uh, and then finally, the second part of my uh, talk. Sustainability. Sustainability of fisheries can be discussed only with the, um, uh, the amount of data available. Okay. And uh, then Daniel Pauli uh, 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 forwarded a hypothesis called shifting baseline hypothesis. Uh, and uh, that is a very clear indication that when we have no data, background data, we create data as such and then uh, build upon uh, the models over that. And that is one of the issues as far as we are concerned. So uh, that means uh, what we need to develop is we have to build up a historical data of uh, uh, jellyfish interactions and uh, try to develop a stronger baseline data so that we can have a larger model and predictions on the uh, jellyfish abundance, uh, movements, patterns, etc. And then uh, already uh, thanks to CMFRA, now there is species specific data is there. But again, the data is uh, just uh, as uh, referred by uh, Mark uh, there, it is not actually CPU data, it's actually the data which is collected along with uh, other fisheries. And probably when you really wanted to uh, make a stronger database, what we require is a stronger data dedicated to uh, fishery, uh, the jellyfish. Then only we can have a, you know, a kind of estimate about the stock and then have predictions, prediction models. So that is one thing uh, which is required. And uh, then uh, working with uh, MPEDA on export data. And you can see that you know uh, whether the, all the data uh, which is collected uh, in uh, the C with the CMFRA and other regional centers and other fisheries departments are actually reflected in the export data. Okay, that is a, uh, because the everything collected is not exported. And the major part I am as a, I am uh, what I have seen is also discarded. A considerable part is discarded by the fishermen, especially when it is uh, there in the net. So that means there can be a kind of uh, a, a dialogue between the research institutions in India and the export uh, people who are primarily interested only in export. To be frank, uh, because their primary duty is to uh, see that more material is exported. But again, uh, when and when we have a data fisheries data and then we have a comparison, that we can have a better uh, science evolved from that. Okay, and then we have we, we need to have modeling primarily on the standing stocks, migratory patterns, and life cycles. Okay, and many of the for example, you know, we were studying uh, the uh, Crambionella in Kerala coast for the last uh, uh, five six years. And we have documented uh, uh, under the, uh, the the underwater migration of the species also. We know the time, but again, we don't know uh, the the pattern of migration because it's not a stationary. It's not the uh, standing population everywhere. So it's actually migrate, and we have no idea. The, what is a migratory pattern of this organism and that is the reason why you see fluctuations in uh, fishery and you know when we collected continuously from Kerala coast the data for uh, five years we could understand that it's all highly fluctuating highly fluctuating data that means the where is the population and what is actually where the life cycle uh, where the breeding happens and all these data actually should come then only we can consolo consolidate the uh, you know the, the fishery potential as well for this uh, particular kind of uh, species and then you can see then you know the in, in this video you know some of the seasons it's actually a menace for uh, the fishermen and this is a scene from very uh, in Trivandrum coast itself and in many of the shore scenes uh, the the net is primarily chocked with uh, uh, the this is uh, uh, during the uh, September October season and th this happens with the uh, Crambional as, uh, as well in some other other seasons okay so Again, some of the possibilities for consolidating the data. One is actually the economic importance. Jellyfish fisheries is, is, an, is primarily economically important uh, for uh, fisheries. And it also provides the uh, income for uh, fishermen. And those, those fishermen who actually throw out, for example, throw out all these species into the back into the waters, it can be collected and it can there can be a, a chain, a market chain, so that it can be used for export as well. Because you are actually wasting the resource uh, here, if, because it's all bycatch. Okay. 
and what about uh, and what is actually our understanding about the availability around the year or in the same season every year because there's a lot of slight changes happening especially in the context of climate change and other factors so that means we sh should have a more ecology ecology oriented research in that sense and impact of hydrography as well as uh, climate change on sustaining this population and uh, uh, their uh, life cycle etc and then social impacts, sustainable jellyfish fisheries need to uh, consider the social impacts uh, on the local communities that depend upon uh, these fisheries. Because in all these years, especially with the trawlers, I have seen that many of the uh, areas, they cannot troll primarily because of uh, the bloom, uh, blooming of uh, these organisms. So one it is, once it is caught in the troll net, then they cannot use the troll net for the next few year, uh, days, primarily because it is full of mucus and they have to clean it and it is actually a laborious uh, process as well. So we need to have a larger understanding on that and uh, then uh, uh, why not find a, a local market uh, there the fisheries departments and cooperative societies can play a very, very important role uh, we need to actually have an access with them and also developing value added products because we have a ser series of value added products coming up but uh, uh, why not specifically on uh, jellyfish which can uh, be popularized locally as well and uh, as of now there is no regulation in jellyfish uh, collection and are we promoting rampant collection without an understanding about the stock or without an understanding about their migratory pattern? And these are the questions to be answered, you know, unless and until we have a stronger uh, data on uh, the standing stock or the population size, are we going to uh, uh, promote all these kind of harvests just for export? And this is again a question, you know, pro probably we have to answer. And uh, uh, are the fishing which is now happening uh, are uh, uh, sustainable? I think it is sustainable looking at the way in which they collect, but that is not science. You know, we should have a harder uh, scientific data available for that. And then definitely uh, EMPEDA or any other organization can ha go for a larger uh, market analysis. And I am sure that, you know, the bell may also be of uh, uh, demand in some part of the world. So nexus and market analysis, feasibility of establishing a, a larger uh, fisheries and uh, as a potential uh, revenue uh, stream. And that is required. And then sustainable fisheries require effective monitoring and research and which of course the MFKRA can uh, take up and uh, then also a better understanding of the ecological roles and the impact of harvesting on the uh, marine ecosystems on a larger uh, perspective. Okay. And what uh, this conference can offer is definitely uh, promoting uh, collaboration. Collaboration. Because the, there are similar uh, uh, papers presented in other days as well, uh, primarily on uh, different parts of the world where they uh, work on fisheries and the sustainable fisheries. And in fact, uh, uh, Mark also presented on ecosystem approach on uh, fisheries, which also ultimately contribute to the uh, goal 14 of the sustainable development goals. And uh, that is again a way, a, the way in which we can uh, uh, promote uh, collaboration more for better science and better understanding of uh, the jelly's uh, role in the ecosystem. And uh, natural variability of the uh, jellyfish uh, population and their role in the ecosystem and ecosystem services is another uh, area where we can uh, work. And also uh, the way in which the jellyfish interact with fisheries and I read an interesting report by CMFRA which says that you know when there is a jellyfish bloom there is decline in the uh, larvae of the uh, oil sardine and similar work can be of very, uh, very, very interesting and very useful especially for uh, predicting the future. So uh, that is another aspect and aquaculture definitely there was a discussion and there are large number of few papers actually presented in, in this seminar as well uh, where uh, uh, we can think about a possibility of some species where aquaculture technology can be uh, developed uh, uh, for uh, sustaining uh, export market as well. And uh, uh, there are large number of uh, research happening in many part of uh, uh, India as well and uh, in our university also there is a startup uh, where they use uh, the jellyfish as a source of uh, collagen. So st startup youngsters and startup is another area where uh, this kind of development of new um, uh, molecules and uh, innovative products uh, can be promoted. So a lot of startup because the government of India is giving a lot of thrust uh, for the startups, particularly by the youngsters. So that will ultimately help in uh, you know uh, uh, increasing the public perception on that. Okay. 
and uh, I am sure that this uh, JBS 7 will be a triggering factor to continue uh, the momentum as well as actually realize the knowledge uh, gaps as well as uh, the jellyfish uh, diversity as well as uh, uh, fisheries in India is concerned. And uh, I am sure that the shared knowledge and uh, uh, the uh, the coordinated efforts in the years to come, as uh, starting with uh, this JBS 7, will ultimately help consolidating the data so that after three years, when there is a JBS 7, we can have a larger uh, data and uh, to present uh, before the international uh, community as well. Okay, and uh, some other areas also, for example, uh, where we have little amount of knowledge, and one is actually the Susandali. Or the symbionts associated with that and ultimately you know uh, how they help sustaining uh, the populations and integrative taxonomy on a larger scale because some of the species uh, migrate and then uh, this uh, can play a very very important role in identifying the stocks especially our industries uh, fisheries and molecular genomics and uh, biogeography is another interesting area which where we need the collaboration of international partners as well and uh, e even in this uh, 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 edition of uh, JBS, we have purposefully introduced a topic called the bio inspiration, but we have lesser number of papers okay, uh, uh, available even from the international community. And uh, again, uh, there are some very interesting groups working on uh, bio inspiration or biomimetics, uh, but on other animals. So they can be uh, actually uh, pulled in uh, to work on bio inspiration uh, with uh, jellyfish as well. Okay. And these are some of the uh, typical uh, examples uh, where uh, we can also take up the work, especially the microbial interaction. Tingara, who presented uh, a, a plenary lecture here, is also very interested, especially working in the tropics and what uh, is the specific role of microbes. Uh, in the biogeochemical cycles in the oceans and uh, where we have absolutely no information available in India. And also uh, collagen as discussed here, uh, another area because it is a huge resource available, especially when the bell is discarded, it can be used as a source of uh, collagen. And again another area probably we can uh, tie up with uh, CMLRE or NAO to start a work is actually deep sea jellies where we have very very little information available and this is another area where uh, probably we can coordinate with the international community uh, to start working on. Okay. And uh, uh, citizen science again is another possibility as far as India is concerned and the reason is very simple because we have a huge population skilled manpower, people very uh, much uh, interested in, in technology and they can be pulled in, many of them are passionate to work and uh, uh, especially the best example is the eBird and eBird is actually an international uh, bird monitoring uh, software which was introduced in India five years back. Now there are one million records from all over India, one million records by the bird watchers in India and we have no such examples in the marine side. So we have still uh, good, very good scope for involving public uh, citizen science, um, involving the local people in uh, documenting not only jellyfish but marine biodiversity and creating a larger database and platform uh, for others to work with. Thank you.